Hey, it's the week of February 15th, 2021. Welcome back to the Lumber Connection. I'm your host, Molly Butts, and I'm joined today, as always, by Justin Benning and Ken Timmons, traders with American International Forest Products. Both concentrate on high-grade lumber for the component manufacturing industry. Justin, Ken, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having us. Awesome. So, you know what I always ask, what happened in the markets last week? The last couple of weeks have been a little bit of the same, but there's been slight change up in the market. Um, from what I'm seeing out in the West, Doug for him for white for high grade MSR and one and better. Um, there has been a little bit of choppiness with the price disparity that we've been talking about over the last few weeks. Some products, um, high grade Doug fur was, was one of the loan products to print off last week, according to random links. Um, but there's a lot of opportunities out there in terms of securing tallies, substituting products if you want to change the MSR. Um, order files are out very, very far. If you're looking at wood, you're going to be getting it sometime in March or April. Um, so as we've been saying over the last few weeks, guys that keep their head up, and I think you'd agree, Justin, as, as long as you're willing to look ahead at the books, you can play this market properly. Anything you'd like to add, Justin? Yeah, absolutely. Well, I mean, I think we've been pretty spot on with kind of our assessments here um, since we've started this. And um, hopefully guys have been staying in the market, <clears throat> actively purchasing some wood. I definitely think it's a smart move. Um, Pine, you kind of had a, a standoff going, you know, with a with um, large segments of the market here over the last several weeks. Um, and you know, from a, the pine mills perspective, um, the yards have really never been as empty from a storage capacity standpoint at the sawmill um, in any recent time in the last few years. Um, and so really, I mean, the, the sawmills had been selling enough to really not have to look at any significant counters in the market. Um, and there were some price breaks here and there, don't get me wrong. Um, and some mills addressed some things, but they'd clean up whatever, you know, uh, nagging item they had and, and firm their price back up. So um, finally, it really felt like you had people kind of threw in the towel and said, well, I got to start covering some spring needs here. Um, the inventory levels really never got to a point where people were allowed to stay out of the market. So there's this constant kind of need to stay in the market purchasing lumber. So it never gave the market really a chance to exhale. Um, so with that said, uh, mills were able to firm prices up. We saw print moving up over the last um, two or three weeks um, throughout all zones. Um, this last print had the east side. East side's probably the weakest of them with um, it's, it's easier to buy wood out of the eastern zone at this point. So price is kind of lagging there. But um, with that said, they're still trading it every single day. Um, weather's obviously been a factor here recently throughout the United States. We really got our first full-blown winter event, really from, you know, east coast to west coast, north to south. Um, anyone that obviously is watching the news can see what's going on across our nation. You're getting a lot of bad weather in, in spots where you're not typically known to get bad weather. So but that's affected production just as it's affected consumption. So a lot of that's kind of canceled each other out. Hasn't really made a, a significant uh, change in the market either way. Um, bottom line is um, spring looks to be very busy. Um, again, I think there's a lot of wood that still needs to be purchased that hasn't. Um, and I expect price prices to continue, whether it's SYP or SPF, continue to gradually rise here um, for, for the for the time being, um, as far as I can kind of see out right now. So it's kind of my take on um, on the current current trade, I guess. All right. Well, that's a great recap from the last the last couple of weeks since we talked. Um, you know, we've been talking amongst ourselves, each other over here at SBCA, and obviously there's a lot of volatility in the current lumber market. And, you know, I guess the overall feeling is that that's a function of a lack of supply versus the current and projected demand. So let's explore that supply side a little bit today. Um, we just ran an article in Industry News in the last couple of weeks that the top 10 U.S. producers represent roughly half of the total U.S. capacity. 
Now, in real terms, that's about 22.8 billion board feet, which is an increase of about 3.9 billion board feet since 2017. So for you guys, how much more capacity do you think we need to meet current and projected demand? Well, Molly, I'm not a scientist. I'm just a lumber broker. Um, and you're talking some big numbers here. Uh, but in all seriousness, I think it's it's difficult to change because it's a you've got a global factor at play. I know I've touched on this the last couple of, of weeks as well, but there's a there's a global demand for lumber and fiber. And it's everywhere that lumber comes from is, is being stretched. Um, now, obviously, the U.S. market is a very, very uh, it's an attractive market with the pricing that we have. With that said, um we weren't ready for this, meaning we were kind of in this transition where we we lost a lot of supply out of Western Canada um, and Yellow Pine was going to be the kind of the savior of the supply chain um, in regards to dimensional lumber. And it wasn't it wasn't ready yet. It wasn't ready for one point seven million starts. It just wasn't. Um, and so. You've had European lumber coming in to the ports, um, into the south, into the mid-Atlantic region. That's helped. Um, however, we're not seeing any more uptick necessarily, even though the Europeans love our market and want to ship more here. Um, we're kind of maxed out for the most part. Um, I think in, in the first quarter, we're actually down a bit uh, lumber coming in into the U.S. So I still think that we'll see a good amount of wood coming in through the finish of the first quarter and into the second quarter on the European side, as far as domestic production, at least in the South, um, there are some sawmills that have that have made some um, upgrades to the sawmills. I do think we'll see some added production. Um, I know there's some new sawmills that are in the process of being constructed and built, but that's a process. Again, that's a, that's a process. Um, so I don't think this year we're going to see enough to make any really sizable dent into what needs to be had. Now to answer your question, how much needs to be to meet with current demand? I don't know. I don't know the answer to that question. Um, that's a, a big math breakdown. It's too smart for me. Um, but I would guess somewhere in the uh, 500 million to a billion board feet. And that's kind of a, just I'm throwing a number out there, but that's a fair amount of wood. Um, so anyways, I, I'm not answering the question fully because I can't, um, but hopefully that's enough uh, information to make some sort of sense, I guess. What do you think, Ken? I totally agree. Absolutely. You responded to the email sort of prepping you for this with some excitement. Tell us what you're thinking. Well, let's let's preface this for the listeners. When I was excited and responded to your email, I had had about 16 shots of espresso and was just ready for the day. So, but I am excited. This is a good question. And I completely agree with Justin. Um, as much as we want to look at the market and make it a production side problem, as we've said, it is really demand side driven. Um, keep in mind that production numbers are up, like you mentioned, and to add a sawmill or construct, that's, that's a process that takes years to acquire the land or acquire a, an old sawmill and get up and running and you know, it's a very long process versus something could happen in the day-to-day -day market that changes demand instantly. March 13th of last year, very quick, right? So, um, I mean, if, if, if I was going to spitball some numbers here, um, it kind of depends on what we mean, how to, how to fix the, the market. If we want prices to go back to, you know, normal, traditional, historic prices, you know, being half of what they are, just, just under half of what they are today. I mean, you could say that we need double the production, but I don't really think that'd be necessary. If we could have 25 or 30% more production, it would really take the emotional edge off of the market. And it would kind of change the way people are procuring their lumber. Um, because right now it's just a, it's a who's got it. You know, as we've said, the guy who's got the wood is better off than the guy who doesn't have any, regardless of the price. So depends how you look at the question um but i think even if we went out and built a bunch of sawmills today likely you know in five years if we have a handful more sawmills the demand that we're seeing right now i i don't know if it'll be there in five six seven years so 
Okay, you're saying five, six, seven years until we might be at a place where there is enough additional production capacity, sort of knowing what you have awareness about in the market. Um, is that really how far off we are before we've got a few more um, a few more mills online? Well, it doesn't. I mean, it doesn't take seven years to get a single mill going. But, you know, if, if we're saying, and I agree with Justin, you know, it's probably 500 million to a billion board feet, you know, a, a substantial sawmill is going to produce two, 300,000, or excuse me, two or 300 million feet a year. You know, a million feet a day would be a, a significant size sawmill, nine, 10 cars a day. So, you know, to get to the point where it's really going to factor into what would create equilibrium now, I think it's likely that demand changes before that kind of power would be, you know, accumulated at the production level because demand is crazy. Yeah. There's so many, so many variables, you know, that, are constant at play in, in a market, right? And that's why it's called market. I mean, it's constantly changing and evolving. And um, But I think ultimately, when we look at production right now, you can buy wood. We have the production to meet the demand. I think ultimately with the question, what we're wanting to know is, is where do we, how do we get prices back down? How much production do we add to get to a price level that seems more, quote unquote, normal from a historical standpoint, what people are used to paying? Um, because again, I mean, there's enough wood to go around. There is, um, it's just, people don't want to, don't like paying for it. And I will say don't, won't pay for it because they are. Um, but you know, again, you start getting lumber prices down. You've got a new administration, uh, in the white house that's doing some things also that could be really pro, uh, you know, our industry. Um, in regards to, um, you know, they've, they've talked about a home buyer's credit. Um, I'm sorry, if you start wiping off student loan debt for 50 grand, you know, you ask a, or a young person starting out their life, the major constraint they have are not buying a home. <laughs> I got a 50 grand in student loan debt. I got 20 grand. I got to pay that off before I can start thinking about my house. Well, you start wiping off millions of, of, young people's debt what's that going to do to the housing market i mean are those people going to now turn into to like wow i've got an extra five hundred dollars a month or eight hundred dollars a month i'm going to go buy a house so i mean there's a lot of things you, you talk about illegal immigration or there are illegal immigrants and all of a sudden those people are given u.s citizenship are they going to run out and now buy a house because they have that ability to um, so there's a lot of things that have, uh, we take in to really create the market and what it is. Adding production, some other things happen. Does that just increase demand? Do we go to 2 million housing starts? 2.2? How long do we stay in this range? This could be a new normal, $800 mil, $750 mil. That could be the low that we see for the next few years. Like it, it's a, That's a possible thing to say, even though it sounds crazy. And the highs could be $1,200, $1,300, $1,400. Just don't know. We've broken broken another record on the futures board, crest a thousand dollars. So I mean, we're we keep seeing these things unfold that we don't think we would ever see, and then we break another record and we break another record. But again, to to I guess get all the things at play to come up with some accurate assessments really really difficult because there's so many things moving and constantly changing. Um, I don't know. Sorry, I'm talking in circles here now. So I'll shut up, but um, I guess maybe you get my point a little bit. Who the hell knows? <laughs> You're painting a good picture. You're, you know. I do. I, I feel that for sure. All right. So let's work under the premise that maybe <clears throat> we're going to have 2 million housing starts in the not too distant future. Is there more production coming online? Are you seeing anything come back online or, you know, ramping up? I know you mentioned there's a couple of places ramping up, like where, you know, where is it happening? Or there's some new place in the South, in the West, in Canada, where, where are we going to get the rest of this, this production if we're going to have that many houses to build? Yeah. So it's, it's going to be the South. I mean, that's where the trees are plentiful. The turnaround time on growth of fiber is as fast as it's going to get when you're talking tree lingo. Um, that's where it's going to come from. That's where the growth of our fiber base domestically is going to come from is the South. I don't see it coming out of Western Canada. 
um, due to the hardships that they've had over the years in loss of forest land and protected lands. Um, now, again, when lumber prices are at this price and this is as good as it gets for a sawmill, they're going to figure out a way to pump out as much lumber as they can. I mean, I, I think we can all agree to that. I mean, it, this is as good as it gets. If you're a sawmill, you want to make lumber when you're getting these types of returns. Um, but to answer your question, it's going to come out of the South. Um, that's a process that is, and there's going to be more wood coming out. Um, Eastern Canada, I think, is another spot. Um, I don't think you're going to see exponential growth, but I do think you're going to see the East really pick up some slack from the West. Um, I think you're going to see Eastern wood traveling into geographical regions that it doesn't or historically typically hasn't. So I think you'll start seeing more of that wood heading into the Midwest. Um, yeah, if there's an idle sawmill out there, I'm sure somebody's looking at trying to purchase it and get it running without a doubt. So um, yeah, Kenny, what do you got? I completely agree. There's no no new production coming out in any of the fur mills. I'm not seeing anything pop up out of Western Canada. The little production I'm hearing about coming on is all yellow pine. As it, I mean, as it should be, as we talked about, that is the new fiber basket. And, you know, it's going to continue to be that way for decades. So if you're a component manufacturer listening to this and you don't use pine, there's certainly something that you should explore now. There's no point in innovating late. You always want to be quick to the game and just explore it, even if you're not going to implement it yet. You know, because say the market's going crazy and you really need something desperately and you don't want to then just explore, oh, maybe we can use this. You want to have that, you know, plug and play ready so you can be active and, and you know, advocate for your business as best as possible. Well, that was awesome. You just answered my last question before I could ask it. So I appreciate that. So I think, you know, just to reiterate what I'm hearing you say is there's going to be a shift to SYP and it, you should probably start thinking about doing it sooner than later because it's sounds like it's a little inevitable at this point. Absolutely. Absolutely worth exploring. Yeah, we're seeing that shift already. Um, seeing a lot of yellow pine heading to Western states, even as far as California. Um, that's a big spot. I mean, right now it's about getting the fiber. Um, yeah, I mean, Utah, Phoenix, uh, Idaho. Um, I'm seeing stress grade material go into there by the carload after carload. It used to be, it was like, no way, we'd never use that here. Like we've, we've never, and it's always been, we've never had to, right? Well, now you're kind of running out of options. And then it's, it's that the lumber business is funny. It's, it's a, it's a trend business as always, but no one ever uses it in a certain geographical region until someone starts using it. And then everybody starts using it. So it's always, it'll never happen until it happens and then everybody's using it. So, and it's almost, yeah, comical, but anyways, um, it's certainly happening and um, I expect that trend to, to continue moving forward. Awesome. Well, you know, as we wrap things up for another week, the thing I always ask, which is what should component manufacturers be thinking about in the next couple of weeks when they're buying lumber? Well, I'm still bullish on the market. I mean, that's that's where my my head's at. So I, I feel kind of uh, like a one track Johnny or an up up market Johnny um, since we've been doing these podcasts. But, you know, the funny thing is, is we really haven't been in <laughs> we haven't really seen anything else since we've been on the podcast. So they say the trend's your friend. Um, the trend right now is up. Um, I expect that to stay. Um, this winter weather that we're having, you know, it's caused a lot of destruction, um, especially through the South. So a lot of damage has been done to homes. That's just another, you know, another log on the fire in, in my eyes. Now you're not gonna see it instantly, but over the next 30, 60 days, you're going to, and there's gonna be an additional demand for that. So. The, the winter weather, though, you know, in major consuming states down south um, where we build a lot of houses, it's going to be 65 degrees there next week. Um, so this, you know, prolonged winter in, in a lot of the major consuming markets is kind of had a flash and, and it, we're going to be back to kind of normal building weather. Um, and we're in a solid market with order files being stretched out by sawmills, many in the case into the middle of March to the end of March. If you're talking plywood panels. Those guys are out in April. So I guess the question is, is spring business going to suck? 
I don't think so. Are guys um, needing to buy wood? And is there a lot of jobs that still need to start and the, and the wood's not bought? Absolutely. Um, so I say this market's going to stay strong. My advice is to stay active in the market and get your needs covered. Ken, any final thoughts? Completely agree with Justin. It's, it's no different. Order files are super far out. Guys, sales are going to be good. The winter weather we just experienced, I believe, is going to be about as bad as it gets. And every day, that's less and less likely that it hits. So big picture, I mean, it's, it's go time. We're going to see a historic building season that's going to last really long through spring and summer. So be prepared. Look ahead. Buy your sales team a few cases of Red Bull and ride the wave. I love that. All right. Well, uh, I really appreciate all this great information today, guys. Appreciate you joining us as always. To our listeners, if you have questions for our experts, please email them to lumber at sbcindustry.com and we'll try to get them answered in the next couple of weeks. Adios.